In this lecture, we're going to talk uh, about the electric field due to a charged disk. Okay, uh, over here we have our charged disk. Uh, you're going to have a point P that we're trying to find the electric field at. Um, we're going to represent the differential element DE as the electric field due to a small ring of charge. Uh, the ring of charge has the dimensions of dr, which is going to be the width. Um, the distance to the ring is going to be our variable r, and then the full length of the disk is going to be capital R. All right. All right. So we need to find the electric field at point P, a distance z from the disk along the central axis. So we're going to divide the uh, ring into concentric the disk into concentric flat rings and then calculate the electric field at point P by adding up or by integrating the contributions for all the rings. Um, so the figure shows one such ring, again radius r, radial width dr. Uh, in this case sigma is going to be the charge per unit area, so we can say that our dq is going to be equal to sigma dA, and again Sigma is just equal to our charge over area. Okay. And a dA in this case is going to be the area of our little rings. So um, if we take the circumference of the ring and multiply it by the thickness dr. So this is going to be equal to sigma 2 pi r. Okay, um, so going back, so we want to find um, the differential element dE. So our total electric field will just be the integral of all the small differential elements. Okay, and we're plugging this right into um, the equation we used previously. Uh, so you're going to have distance away z times sigma 2 pi r dr, which was our dq from earlier. And this is all going to be divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times the radius squared. Um, so the radius in this case is going to be the distance from point B, excuse me, from point P all the way to our ring. So if you notice this creates a triangle and you with the sides of r and z. Uh, so the hypotenuse of the triangle is just going to be z squared plus r squared and the square root of that. Alright, so we'll just say that it is z squared plus r squared to the one half. We can simplify this a little bit and pull out um, the constants that we don't want to use. So that'll be sigma times z divided by 4 epsilon naught. The pi's are going to cancel, so this pi will cancel with that pi, which is why we don't end up with any pi's. Um, and we're going to actually keep the 2 in here, and you'll see why we want to do that in a second. z squared plus r squared, and that's all to the 1 half. Okay. All right, so now we can find E by integrating DE over the surface of the disk. Uh, so we just found the little ring. We want the whole surface so we can integrate um, from our variable R, which is the radius of the disk, from R is equal to 0 to R is equal to uh, big R, which is a constant. Okay, so let's go ahead and start plugging this stuff in. So we have E is equal to, again, our integral DE. equal to sigma z divided by 4 epsilon and then we're going to take the integral of everything else so it's 2 pi r dr divided by z squared plus r squared and that's going to be to the 3 over 2 Let's go back for one second. Um, so, forgot that this is going to be squared, so um, we need to add, change this to 3 over 2 as well. So that's 3 over 2, 
and that's 3 over 2. Okay. All right. So if you noticed, we kept the 2 in here for good reason, because uh, if you look at our bottom term, we take the integral of this, the derivative of what's on the inside is actually 2r dr. So it makes our integral work out uh, really easily. All right, so to take the integral, we're going to want to, let's do this again. We're going to want to put everything in the uh, numerator. So we'll just pull the bottom up to the top. So this is going to be z squared plus r squared to the negative 3 over 2, 2r dr. All right, so we can go ahead and do the integral. Uh, it's going to be equal to 2 times uh, sigma z divided by 4 epsilon naught. I'll tell you in a second where that 2 came from. And then on the inside, it's just going to be negative 1 divided by the square root of z squared plus uh, r squared. This is going to be big R squared. And it's going to be from 0 to r. So again, up here, I want to take our integrals from 0 to r because it's going to be from the center of the disk all the way out to the edge of the disk. All right, um, so quickly with the integral, um, you want to take, uh, so the integral of negative 3 over 2, you're going to add at 1 to the exponents, you get negative 1 half, which is why we just have the square root of z squared uh, plus r squared. So yeah, z squared plus r squared. Uh, and then that would all have been divided by a negative 1 half. Uh, because that's what the exponent was. So when you divide by negative one half, I go ahead. I went ahead and pulled uh, the two out over here, and then I put the negative back inside. All right. So moving on to the next step, to simplify this. We have two sigma divided by four epsilon. I'm going to go ahead and put the z inside. Uh, okay. So when I do that, um, I first want to take um, this value, whoops, excuse me, this is still little r. Um, so I want to take um, the r value first. So we plug in big R for little r, and that's going to uh, end up being negative because you have a negative sign there. So you get negative z. Again, I pull the z inside, so it's going to be a numerator on both. It's going to be z squared plus r squared. And then we subtract uh, the value when 0 is plugged in. If you just subtract a negative, you're going to have to put a positive. Again, we're going to have z uh, on top. And when you plug in 0 here, you're just going to get the square root of z squared on the bottom. And if you look at this last term, you get z over z, because the square root of z squared is just z. So this is just going to go to 1. All right, well, let's simplify this and make this look a little prettier. Um, so dividing 2 by 4, you end up with just sigma on the outside divided by 2 epsilon naught. Now on the inside, flipping this around and putting the 1 first, we get 1 minus our second quantity here, and that's going to be z divided by the square root z squared plus big R squared. Okay. Now if we want to change it to a vector, you can add our vector symbol at the front there. This is uh, going to be oops, in our z direction. Because it's the electric field in z direction, we know anything uh, in the in the plane perpendicular to the disk is going to cancel out because it's a big, uh, it's a circle. Now, uh, if we let r go to infinity, which means this big r here, which uh, means you're creating an infinite plane, um, the second term in the parentheses in the above equation is going to approach zero. So as this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this value gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which means one minus something really small is just one. Um, so 
the equation that we can use for an infinite sheet of charge is just going to be simply E is equal to sigma, which again is the area charge density, uh, divided by 2 epsilon naught. All right, and that's it for this lecture.